Hello everyone, it's Chow here, and today we are going to talk a little bit about adaptive radiation, so let's get started. Okay, so adaptive radiation is a very interesting concept proposed by evolutionary biologists, evolutionary ecologists, and it's this really interesting way to look at speciation. More specifically, a way for one particular lineage to diversify dramatically often following certain events. So what's really fascinating is that when it comes to adaptive radiation, mass extinctions are often followed by periods of adaptive radiation. So if you look at the situation, like over here, we can see that 65 million years ago, there was some event that happened. We know this is actually the KT extinction, the Cretaceous extinction, that knocked out a lot of dinosaurs. Well, most of the dinosaurs, except for the birds, I guess. So it killed off most of the dinosaurs, and after that, there are new ecological niches that arose, which allowed for diversification, in this case, of mammals. So what exactly is adaptive radiation? Well, as I mentioned, adaptive radiation is really nothing more than rapid diversification of form and function within a lineage of organisms. And in terms of adaptive radiation, there are three things that trigger it. The first is extinction, the second one is colonization, and the third one is some kind of a morphological innovation. So let's go through each of these uh, uh, right now. Okay. So the first one is extinction. This should make a lot of sense, I think. But extinctions can actually drive for adaptive radiation because of an ecological opportunity release from pathogens, as well as predators and other limiting factors. So we think back to that 65 million years ago, we had the KT extinction, which knocked out most of the dinosaurs. And because there are no longer large, predator, uh, large predators, um, and also perhaps the large uh, herbivores also disappeared, there is this opening of this niche which allowed for other organisms to take over. At the time, mammals were really small in size, but because the large organisms, the dominant organisms, the dinosaurs died out, that allows for some kind of an ecological release, and it thus allows those mammal lineages to diversify dramatically. So elimination of dominant organisms opens up new ecological opportunities, as well as ecological opportunity released from things such as pathogens and predators and other things that get knocked out as a result of the extinction. So that's the first thing that triggers adaptive radiation. The second thing that triggers adaptive radiation is colonization. So when you have species or an original founding population or individuals that go to a new type of habitat, for instance, from the mainland to, the island, to an island off the coast somewhere, that can allow for adaptive radiation because you have a new ecological niche that might not be fulfilled by organisms. So a very popular example is shown over here where you have Darwin's finches, an ancestral Darwin's finch that showed up on the Galapagos Islands. It spread to different islands. And because of those open niches, which I guess previously didn't have any uh, bird diversity on them, allowed the Darwin's finches to diversify in their, bur uh, in their beak shape, in their behavior, in their foraging, and that ultimately created about 13 to 14 different species of Darwin's finch on the Galapagos Islands. And so the descendants of all those different species of finches um, actually came from one single common ancestor. So it's a monophyletic clade. What's really fascinating too is we see these types of adaptive radiations also in other locations. For instance, in uh, Hawaii. In Hawaii, we have honey creepers, which are very beautiful birds that have diversified from one single common ancestor. But this adaptive radiation was allowed by a colonization event to a new habitat. So what's really fascinating is that when you have these adaptive radiations, there can be different triggering events. So we have extinctions, we now have colonizations to a new habitat, as in the case of the Darwin's finches and the Hawaiian honey creepers. We also have one more thing, and that is morphological innovation. So a morphological innovation is just a morphological feature slash behavior that can allow certain organisms to exploit a new range of resources that weren't available to them previously. A very good example of this is with snakes. So snakes are really cool because they have jaws that unhinge. And this 
kinetic skull that allows them to unhinge their jaws allows them to eat things that are bigger than their heads. So you have this egg-eating snake here that's consuming an egg that's much larger than its head. So this is a morphological innovation. What's really fascinating is that this evolution of this morphological innovation allowed snakes to eat things bigger than their heads that offers them a new resource which thus allowed them to have great diversification. So it's a new novel evolution of some kind of an innovation, some kind of a behavior or some kind of a trait that allows that lineage of organisms to, ex to take advantage and maybe exploit certain resources. And snakes now having unhinged jaws and being able to feed on very big items allows them to diversify dramatically. And we could see it over here. So we have some species um, of uh, reptiles. So I think these are all snakes. If I'm, yeah, so this is Serpentes over here. So this entire group here uh, it consists of a clade called snakes. And you can see there are some snakes that have akinetic skulls, which means they don't have the unhinged jaws. These snakes down here had the uh, the the um, the unhinged jaws, so they are actually the ones that are able to consume things that are bigger than their heads. So the akinetic skulls are the ones that can't unhinge their jaws, so they can only feed on smaller organisms. Those down here with the kinetic skulls can unhinge their jaws and feed on bigger organisms, things that are bigger than their heads. And as you can see, there are much more species with kinetic skulls than there are akinetic skulls, which suggests from just simply species counts that there is a greater diversification of lineages of species with these kinetic skulls. So this morphological innovation that occurs in some group of snakes, that unhinging of the jaws, allowed them to diversify greatly. And so what's really fascinating in many ways is that if you're looking at morphological innovation, the critical component for snakes and some lineages is actually this concept of an innovation. But at the heart of it all, the critical component for adaptive radiation really is ecological opportunity. And so I can't stress how important this is. This is like the term that you have to know for the exam. But the critical component for adaptive radiation is ecological opportunity. And the kinetic jaw evolution allowed snakes access to new ecological opportunities in the form of bigger food items. So at the end of the day, just to summarize, adaptive radiation is just a rapid diversification of form and function in a lineage of organisms, as shown here and in many other examples like uh, the honey creepers as well as the finches and snakes. And it's often triggered by three main events. We have extinctions that allowed for ecological release and new opportunities, colonization, which again can allow for new opportunities, and then finally morphological innovation, which once again allows for ecological opportunities. So at the very end, in terms of adaptive radiation, the key critical component is ecological opportunity. So I hope you found that at least mildly useful and best of luck studying and I'll see you in the next video. Take care everyone.